Okay, one more time. Hello, everyone. Various waifs and strays, as Dan Howley used to say. I'm in New Orleans, of all places. I am with familiar welcome face, Josh Greenbaum. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. Good to be here. Good to be here with you. Yes, so we, we have commandeered a room. We're actually legit. We got it scheduled, actually, which is cool, thanks to ASUG. We are at the final day of ASUG Tech Connect, and we are going to debrief the event and find out what we learned. This is kind of an interesting event because it sprung from a lot of changes, I guess you could say, in, in SAP conference land. I go back to last spring in Chicago. You and I were actually at ASUG headquarters unrelated. We were talking about the future of community and SAP. And and then we learned that there wasn't going to be a, a tech head in Vegas. Well, we can actually dial even further back, right? Oh, to, right. To New York. Oh, New York, right. New York, right. So we were- That at, was at the analyst thing in New we York, were at an right? an analyst summit. And that's when the news- sort of ran across my desk that right. there was no tech ed North America coming right. up. And, um, you know, and this was fo following on the tech ed North America that had been in um, in 22, which was kind of disappointing. It was, as I jokingly called it, the, the conference formerly known as tech ed. Um, so to find out that there was actually going to be nothing at all instead of some attempt to improve on a mediocre one was was pretty much a shock. Right. Right, and of course there was SAP Tech Ed Bangalore last week, and there was a virtual event that we were told was yesterday was very well attended. Uh, we had we talked to SAP directly yep. about that. They said I think they said thirty thousand people. They were felt good about registered. it. Yeah, they said they had good numbers. But anyhow, so they so that happened. But but when we were in this in the spring at ASA, we were talking about would it make sense to 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 do a different type of event, and it wouldn't necessarily by any means, be a replacement for tech ed. I mean, the history of tech ed, you can get pretty nostalgic about the heyday of that event. That's not what this was about. This was envisioned as a chance to bring together tech leadership to try to make sense of SAP and beyond. And lo and behold, a lot of people showed up. I guess they they want to understand this crap, huh? Yeah, I think the appetite was there. I think that that was a nice, you know, that was a nice uh, moment that, that we all called it, all of us in that room, that there was actually, you know, there, there is demand. Um, I think it's a, you know, it's a combination of truly, you know, not just pent up demand for in person, but I think we all, you know, collectively sat around for a couple of years, you know, looking at the four walls of our houses and apartments, thinking, what do we miss? And we realized we did miss this stuff. This, this face, we missed it more than we realized. So I think, I think in addition to the, the growing need to to really understand an increasingly complex set of technology and business choices, people want to actually do that rubbing shoulders face to face. Right. And so, you know, this does leave open, I think, a lot of questions around the future of SAP events for technical types. Um, there's a transition that developers, for example, need to make from ABOP to ABOP plus a bunch of other stuff. Right. Um, and we could get into that, but that's not what an event like this is for. It's not a hands-on lab for transitioning those skills. I think those kinds of things are also needed, but but I think what's cool about this event ultimately is that it turned into a collaboration. Um, SAP and ASUG definitely made sure that this event kind of met the the needs that it was proposed to meet. And Jürgen Mueller was part of the keynote, and of course, he's a key player in the future of SAP technology as board member and CTO, and we actually talked with him right. after the keynote. So we're going to share a little bit from that conversation, though I am actually writing an article about that. For those of you that have a huge appetite to digest tech head news, there's a massive news guide online. We're not going to try to cover that in this podcast, but I wrote a 3,000-word article on Digenomica about it if you want to read it, including a lot of stuff we learned about AI. But what we really wanted to do today was kind of talk about taking the pulse of what we actually heard on the ground here. And I guess I want to start by this notion of why do you think so many people showed up? Like, like it, this seems like a validation that, that the tech leader of today in the SAP context is facing some pretty momentous issues. Well, you know, and, and absolutely. And it, it's, it's, and it's a wide range of issues and the timing is, is essential for these companies. They need to, you know, they, they need to get some of these questions answered yesterday, <clears throat> and they know it. Um, you know, and, and just to add, I mean, considering how late this thing was planned, the and the context of the global economy and travel budgets being restricted, the, the kind of attendance 
that showed up here was was very impressive. But I think you know everybody I talked to had a real pressing problem that that needed solving, that needed answers. Um, a number of folks said, you know, we listened to tech ed online, but we couldn't ask questions. We need answers. Uh, they came here, you know, and they, they were smart enough to see that need up front and, you know, plan for it. Um, and, and I think that, I, th I think a lot of them, I, I saw several of them today on the last day and they, they're, they're definitely getting the answers they need. They may not be the answers they want, but they're mm. getting the answers. That's good. Right. And I think that that was something that I really liked about this event is I, I felt I have perceived a pretty good mix between peer discussions. The, the one downside from peer discussions at times is sometimes you actually need validated roadmap information. And so it was good to see some of the SAP presentations I sat, on, sat in on, which were not salesy for the most part, but were actually informational. And, and I think so customers were able to get a lot of answers. Yeah. And after the first day keynote, you and I also did a session on decoding SAP, like right. what the hell is SAP actually talking about? <laughs> And that was really interesting too. And it was it was cool to kind of get a sense of the range of where customers were at. But just to give listeners an idea, I mean, when I went into this event, I went in with a totally open mind as far as I, re I just wanted to understand what customers care about because that's often different than what vendors say from the keynote stage. That's not unique to SAP. That's an enterprise-wide phenomenon. <laughs> and it's really, really important to get that gut check. So I forced in the hand poll, I forced people to choose between, are you here for S4 or are you here for AI? And it was 98% S4 over AI as a gross simplification. Now, this, this does not mean that the, the, the folks here are not interested in AI because I went to a generative AI roadmap session later that was well attended. I think what it comes down to though is urgency of problems right. versus roadmap versus perceived ROI and the impact of that. If someone felt that AI was going to solve the problem that they had tomorrow on their project, I think those numbers would have been different. But the reality is that S4 is staring customers in the face. And it was really interesting too in the nuances of that, just to see that companies are in a very different place as far as how they're even approaching S4. Some of them are still making sense of it. A lot of them don't have a business case, but we did hear from one customer that was very articulate, not only about S4, but their overall transformation strategy and how S4 fits in. So in my mind, that's the huge benefit of coming to a show like this is to really understand what other customers are doing. And maybe you need to look at a broader business case around this instead of just saying, well, we have to do it, so we're right. going to do it. And, you know, and this, is, you raised a good point. I mean, I, every, pretty much everybody I talked to on the customer side showed up here with, 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 with a real programmatic sort of sense of what they're looking for. Like, they've got, they've got to fix this problem. They've got to deal with this thing. Those folks that you mentioned, um, you know, they're, they were one of two companies that I talked to, ironically, on, on day one, both of whom were, were, um, in the middle of a of moving from an AS400 ERP base to S4 HANA, which sounds like an incredible lift to me. Interesting enough that there were there happened to be just two of them, probably more. Um, and they came, obviously they came with a real long list of questions, like because that's a that is phenomenally non-trivial problem to solve. Yeah, uh, pretty yep. fascinating. Yep, and then you had you had uh, someone else. Uh, in that group that was looking at some success factors issues, right? So it's kind of, you had a wide range, right? In their case, they had some public sector slash university functionality. They're trying to make oh, sense yeah. of, <clears throat> is that going to be something they're going to be able to continue with in the future? Is SAP sunsetting some of that? Like, you know, so, and then also the future of development was on that person's mind. And so, you know, people came with a range of questions. One interesting thing too, that, that I find fascinating around, if I can just make one generalization around the AI stuff, is that it kind of breaks down into two aspects, which is there's definitely interest in understanding SAP's generative AI strategy, but it's inter it's fascinating how the AI conversations here always devolve back into data and, qu and data quality. And that happened right in our session. Yeah, well, Some, I, I, someone, I, I took it there, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and one of the attendees too, right? They said... Yeah. So garbage, want to say more about that? Out. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean that—that's you know my my. I was sort of joking when when 
David Wascom introduced us and said, well, I have this question about Gen AI. And I said, yeah, the only question I'm going to answer is I don't want to, didn't want to talk about it. <clears throat> but, you know, in my response always, and in fact, now I'm deciding this is a really good aspect of Gen AI is that whether, whether you're for it or against it, <laughs> whether you see the business case today or the, or the future, the, the, I, the first thing you're going to have to do anyway is clean up your data. Really do that data governance, data management thing that they probably should have been doing a long time ago. Um, in order to be able to have clean data, and uh, like that one, you know, that one attendee yep. said, "Yeah, we 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 used the data we had, and it was garbage in, garbage out. That's what you're going to get." So I, th I think I think if anything, qu calling attention to data quality and data governance, master data management, maybe that's you know, maybe I'll, I'll put you know, be a little more positive about about what we're all doing with Gen AI because that that impacts there. Right, and it's so so. There's this parallel track of like, well. A lot of the general generative AI functionality for SAP and pretty much any vendor is still in fairly formative stages, but like maybe that's okay because there's a huge sort of data prep, data rationalization, data governance thing that has to happen. So get on with that. Yeah. And 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 develop some business case results around that. Because there's a lot of other stuff you can do. <laughs> With better data besides generative AI. Yeah, so. and, and interesting enough, I had uh, coffee this morning with uh, with some folks from a major uh, North American utility, and you know, and this guy was not the SAP expert. He's uh, he's the AI guy. I'm sorry, the the, um, the 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 BI expert. Too many acronyms, and you know, and he's looking at how do I deal with my data problems writ large, which include a lot of non-SAP stuff. Um, He's here to try to fix, you know, figure out what do you do. He's, you know, he sat in on a BTP session, listened to the data sphere pitch, uh, wanted my take on how, you know, ready for prime time some of this stuff was. And I said, not necessarily. And he said, he, he said, look, to his credit, and I think to SAP's credit, he said, in a way, that's okay. We got, we got a year or so planning to do anyway. Uh, but, you know, he's trying to sort through all these different offerings from every uh, all the vendors who lined up as incumbents inside his company and um this is a good place to go he, he wasn't actually happy with the answer he got but the, he did get an answer as i as i alluded to earlier so what were your other big takeaways any highlights from your discussions well you know i think i think the 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 success of a conference like this does hinge on the <clears throat> the practical side is this, there needs to be something for everybody. Um, so this is an ecosystem. There's you want the partners to be to, to be to be participants. They, quite frankly, help pay for some of the, pay some of the bills. Um, the partners felt it was a great show. For every every single one of them. I talked to quite a number um, because they had a, they had a good engaged set of customers. They had. Um, they understood their their job was not to you know not to not to sell. They I think they for the most part were doing a good job of it. But they they felt that this was a place to have an honest and open conversation with you know with SAP and the customer. So I think that that felt really good. Um, you know I learned I learned some really interesting sort of tidbits about you know for instance how how far behind a lot of these uh, S4 HANA um, private cloud and, and on-premise customers are in terms of keeping up with their the S4 HANA revs and what an impact that has. It's ironic there we are in S4 land dealing with the same problems we always had with you know ECC and R3 on-premise. People don't want to upgrade in a timely fashion, um, and I think you know that's a that's an interesting dilemma. Um, they you know and the flip side of it you know, is I went to a you know a um, a presentation by by a customer who talked about exactly that process of how they went through and they really cleaned up their act and got huge returns <clears throat> on not just you know not just the upgrade but the the data cleanse and you know and it literally showed up in the bank because they were paying uh, their hyperscaler you know x amount less every month just because they had a more efficient system full stop. While we're on the subject of partners, I have a shout out to a partner. Sovanta, S-O-V-A-N-T-A, Sovanta Innovation Factory for SAP BTP. They're the first partner I've ever spoken with that focuses only on BTP. Hmm, and I think it's pretty cool because they're upstarts, which is why I'm giving them a shout out. And 
you know, one of the big issues around this whole clean core BTP sort of transformation is it's a totally different business model for partners. And a lot of partners, understandably, are not there yet. And they, they yeah. made a ton of money on custom code. And that was sort of like how they paid the bills. And so here's a firm that's only doing BTP based stuff. And it was really interesting to talk with them and also have a longer conversation about why BTP. In other words, like, because I think one of the things we fall into a trap in these shows is thinking that that's the only way that companies can do these chores. And it's not. There's a lot of different platforms out there. There's a lot of ways to build apps. There's a lot of ways to integrate with third-party systems. And as it's on SAP to show that they have the business content and and the ease of of use for a developer who wants to build and extend. And 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 integrate and so this these partners had some good things to say about the progress that SAP has made in some of those areas. I won't get into the full thing now, but I think it, it's cool to see um, a business model emerging. And you know, they they talked to me pretty openly about how a lot of partners they can't do that overnight. Right. Um, <clears throat> it's it's a gradual process, but it it's good to see it. And I hope SAP does more emphasis on what you might call next generation partners, which might not all be just BTP based. But I will say that the interest in clean core was quite high. I went to w one of the clean core sessions and it was just overwhelmingly overpacked and there were a lot of questions. And, you know, I'm a bit of a clean core advocate and that I, I think a lot of technical debt has proven to be very costly for companies in ways they never anticipated. And, that's a topic that I think came out in my discussions with Jeff Scott. I know you're meeting with him today, but I got a couple quotes from him around sort of why he thinks it's so important for for a variety of reasons for companies to move into more of a what you might call agile sort of approach to IT and you know that everything fits into that, whether it's cloud or AI or just basically serving the business. And so anyway, just a lot of interest in understanding SAP's clean core thing. And there's actually a lot of different components to the clean core, like as far as how you get there that are worth investigating if you're an SAP customer. And that does not, by the way, mean, in my opinion, that you have to then embrace SA all SAP technologies going forward. It's just that SAP has some pretty good guidelines for how to get to a better place with your SAP footprint. And they showed some pretty convincing stuff in that around a couple of customers, including Hitachi, that basically have made it a lot easier to stay current um, when they clean up their systems, which is kind of like an obvious thing. But It's obvious, but there's... 50 years of history yeah. in the SAP ecosystem for not doing that. Right. And that's that's different than capitalizing on new business opportunities for sure, but it, it but it's still, you know, to your point, it can have a direct cost impact, so. And and, and yeah, and it's it's, you know, it paves the way for you know, doing, you know, doing doing things the right way um, and kind of setting up, you know, setting up your IT system, your SAP system for, you know, to to, to not be an anchor. <laughs> you know, down the road. Um, you know, no, go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. You I first. was just going to say, you know, I, I'm, I, as you know, John, this, uh, I've been either bragging or complaining about, depending on the, my mood, but this is my sixth <laughs> SAP uh, event in six weeks. Oh, uh, my God, did, dude. Yeah, I know. I did, four, that's four. You're going to need like a detox, SAP I, I'm, detox. Yeah, I'm going into, I'm going to the spa, you know, I'm going <laughs> to go on a, yeah, an all, all no tech diet. But uh, you know, four four in person, two two online, um, and you know, there's some some themes that are really emerging. Um, and product, you know, one of the things that's very interesting to me, and particularly came out a couple in a couple of conversations and presentations, of, is the growing importance of Signavio, and that's you know that in itself tells me a lot about a you know, growing sense of maturity about not just the problem of you know technical debt but process debt. As well, mm -hmm. um, and as you know, I'm a, I'm a unabashed fan of cloud ALM. Uh, I think that you know there's there's more mention of that here than than in previous tech conferences. I, I think, think there's a session on that later today. Is if there? You wanna, I'm, okay. if you can catch let's, it before you hit your this up plane. Yeah, get, out, get you yeah. over there. Yeah. Um, you know, I spoke at the cloud ALM summit in Mannheim uh, late last month, and and I think you know this is some of the secret sauce that uh, I um, I. I really think is going to make a difference, and it's nice to have that pushed out a lot, a lot more to the customer base because they you know, it's not, it's not what you've always done. You know, it's not your 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 typical kind of, you know, 
infrastructure tool, uh, Signavio is, is changing the game as well. And there's some, there's some good stuff here in terms of game-changing technology for managing implementation infrastructure that, that I think is you know, starting to, get, starting to get, see the light of day. Yeah, and I think it will be interesting because I've, I've made the mistake in the past of salivating over SAP's potential. If they could only unite the clans, you know, bring the tools together into one comprehensive offering. And so I'm not going to fall for the cheese just yet on that. But I, but I do understand what you're saying. That and, and actually, this brings us, I want to talk a little bit about our conversation with Jurgen because this, this kind of came up also. We were kind of riffing on that with, with him. And, right. and, and the, to me, what gets really interesting there, because I've been a pretty harsh critic of, of Rise, in particular, the sort of feeling that Rise is the solution to every problem, which has been troubling to me. Um, <clears throat> It's not that Rise, I don't think, has value. I just think you have to be careful about the force fit part. And But what got really interesting in our discussion with Jurgen was when we got into that discussion of the tooling you're describing. Right. And, and now you start thinking about Rise not just as a hyperscaler management program, but as an overall way of, of managing process transformation and your overall like footprint around managing that in a cloud context with SAP handling that. And I started saying, if you turn Rise into that type of more business and process offering as well as hyperscaler, then maybe you won't have to sell it. Maybe customers will come to you and say, can you give me this because I really want this. Yeah, you because can, you can that, build a, a real business case around, around that. And to be clear, Jurgen didn't like commit in our meeting to go off and doing that, but, but, but I think there was a sense that I got from him that that they're that they're thinking about how all those things can fit together. So at least they're thinking about how. Well, that you know, work. And, and I mean, one of the customer event, uh, talks I went to yesterday they talked about how they were using Signavio to actually um, sort of create some some KPIs uh, for functionality in, in, in a sp sp specific lines of business, and then benchmarking those KPIs against industry data and really fine tuning. The, the business value of the process using this infrastructure, you know, in this case, you know, Signavio, um, you know, that's, that's real money in the, on the table. That's real business, you know, user satisfaction and, and throughput. Um, and, and boy, industry, you know, if it's benchmarked against industry standards and you're exceeding the standards, you're, you're leading your industry. That's, that's all really powerful stuff it's it's you're right there's a lot of you know there's a lot of kool-aid that has to sort of be refined into something a little more nutritious uh to make it work but it's a good it's a good it's a good strategy to keep an eye on absolutely and the there were some other cool things that i heard from our meeting with jurgen and talked more about s4 hana and supporting customers from a migration standpoint it was good to hear that that his team is still looking at at adding even more there. And, and there's a lot of partners actually right now, along with SAP, that have some pretty good migration tools. But what Jurgen was saying that I totally agree with is that customers want as little friction as possible when they make this S4 HANA move from a tactical standpoint. So it's good to hear that SAP is working on that. Um, there was also some discussion, and this will be in my piece also, because you and I also met with the chair of the German speaking user group yes. who happened to be here. He was kind of on a New Orleans sort of uh, experience New Orleans, John. I think he was really enjoying not putting on an event because they just... pretty much said that flat out. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. He, can, he can just attend yeah. sessions, yeah. And and there was a bunch of interesting stuff in that, but one of his big concerns is making sure that, that his members feel they have access to SAP innovation regardless of whether running on Prem or Cloud. And so... You know, we had some discussions with him, and also I brought this up with Jurgen. I have yet to see a single technical reason why you have to be on Rise to consume things like AI. You can talk about Rise from a cloud management standpoint and that it's best practice and all that, but SAP has to be really careful there, and so that didn't get resolved at this conference, but it's a topic you're going to hear more about because... If SAP wants to be the forward-thinking innovation partner, not just the ERP partner in the API data repository for next-gen solutions for other vendors, mm. SAP needs to really look hard at what the user groups are saying there, and hopefully that will happen, and that's going to continue. So, you know, I do think SAP has had a lot of dialogue about this this fall, and I've seen some changes in the tone, yeah. but we'll see. Anyway, it's an interesting conversation.
didn't get resolved this week, though. It didn't. You know, as much as we're sitting here talking about rise, this was largely a rise-free event. Uh, it didn't really get mentioned a lot at all. Uh, no. It was looming, though. So, yeah, for example, for example, in the clean core thing, they talked about how the rebranding around private cloud is basically known as Rise Now, and it, that set off some flags for me because I can think of private cloud scenarios that should have nothing to do with Rise per se. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's there, but 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 at least from from an SAP standpoint, they weren't trying to force fit something at this conference that customers didn't want to talk about, right. and yeah. that that was appreciated. I think. I really got a sense of people trying to solve collective problems here. And the other thing I just want to say as far as ASUG is concerned is that organizing an event in six months for anyone who's ever done a large-scale event is really insane. And they, they did it. Yeah, you got to be crazy. And I really liked there was a good amount of, like, it didn't check all my boxes for creative event design. I think there's more that can be done, especially around more informal, peer-to-peer -peer educational sessions and stuff like that. But... Uh, given the time frame, it was pretty cool, and they even I'm wearing these like little pins on my badge because they have this little they have this personality thing that you could take and figure out what kind of team member you were. I really like that because it, it gets you thinking about how you function with other teams, but it's the kind of thing to roll out for a last minute conference, very well thought. So, you know, I think it's worth looking at an event like this from the vantage point of what does a customer event look like, and what it looks like is short, fast keynotes. And then lots of sessions, lots of networking, and you know, vendors putting on their own shows could learn a thing or two from this kind of playbook. Yeah, I think. I, I think it was very successful. And then I, you know, I saw, you know, that the, they they had a lot of break times. There's a lot of networking set up, you know, where there was no sessions, where there's, you know, yep. time to mingle, um, you know, food, coffee not warm enough. Uh, <laughs> coffee didn't quite meet your standards no, this week. I was, you know, yep. but I'm a, I'm a bit of a crank about that. Um, but um, but yeah, I think I think that this is again. I want to really shout out to the ASA organizers because having that mingle time, having that downtime, where you don't have to rush to a session, but you just kind of sit there and, and and people used it. You know, there there was a lot of you know my 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 favorite thing I got to do is put these two AS, AS four hundred transition companies together and, and watch them walk off and go. I have a conversation. Yeah, um, that's pure gold. And and saw them, you know, saw yep. some of them again this morning. Uh, you know, continuing that that effort. It's 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 really um, it's really impressive. I have to. I just have to say one thing else to the organizers. Um, we're in New Orleans, and the first day, day one keynote, we're all you know. There's a start at eight o'clock outside the keynote theater with a breakfast thing, and you know, a lot of tables, people sitting down, and then to get every draw everyone into the into the theater itself, out, out somewhere in this convention center comes a gospel choir. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, you showed me the video. Yeah, that like amazing. walking, you know, in their in their in their robes. I mean, it was, you know, it was it was it was actually a lot of fun, and they they sort of led like you know, you know, led led the uh, led the attendees into the into the into the theater, got up on stage, started singing, dancing, and they had that audience standing up, clapping. Along to the music, and I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Just everybody sat down before anything happened at you know, at this at Tech Connect. They were sitting down there with a smile, uh, excited about you know the, the, what was to come. It was a really, it was a really well you know nice 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 little touch. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a, that's treacherous ground for shows because you can really go I think awry with overdoing the. The entertainment, but in that context, it sounded like it did just the right amount. You of know, I'm the crankiest guy. Getting on earth people. About oh yeah, I know. So, well, I got a message from you the next day that wasn't quite as yeah. The drum, quite the drum as corps was enthusiastic loud, about uh, the drums. Yeah. So you can you can go yeah. off track pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, though. and the brass band this morning actually was pretty fun, but but the there's, choir did it did. A, there's one other thing I wanted to point out that I think is interesting, which is that the um, when you think about sort of the next phase of of the enterprise it's that unintentional positive impact of ai that you're talking about where mm -hmm. really forcing companies to play nice with each other in ways that in the past they didn't and this goes back to one of my favorite posts you've written in the last couple of years on the heterogeneous enterprise right. and 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 how vendors want to pretend like it's not but it is and this event really picked up on that when i in in a good way when i walk into the keynote and 
they have Microsoft on stage too. S Scott Guthrie is his name, I think. Right. Yeah. And and they're having a long conversation about the future of AI and all this stuff between SAP, ASUG, and Microsoft. And and meanwhile, Microsoft and SAP are competing fiercely in other areas around cloud services and stuff like that for SAP customers. And yet, in that moment, there's a need not just to introduce a partner, but to have a long conversation together. That's the difference between the days of old where you might have a partner on to handshakes and smiles. But this was actually a long thing. And it to me, it's it's interesting, like the future of this, like that we're going to have to learn how to work together in and and I, I hope we can get to a day where there's no shame in having, oh, here's a Salesforce example at an SAP show, and here's a, here's Coupa over here, and because it's all about plugging it all in in the way that the customer wants to do, in the interests of their overall plan, and and so to me, like when I see that, it it's encouraging. Yeah, Even, I, I, you know, not just for the giant, you know. Microsoft sized custom uh, partners. I think I think SAP is slowly getting its act together about giving a shout out to some of the smaller partners, the more, you know, the more niche partners, uh, the ones who really make up that long tail of partner yep. func functionality that they desperately need. I, I was I, I'm I'm encouraged by that. Um, you, and you you know, as you said, you know, I've been I've been really pushing hard uh, at all levels of SAP to recognize the reality of the customer base. They need to they need your help. Every vendor, they need every vendor's help in navigating the complexity that they unfortunately grew up with and are now having to kind of deal with in this incredibly fast-paced economy. They got to they got to pivot on a dime, you know, with this with pulling all this technical and 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 you know process debt behind them, and and a lot of it has to do with the heterogeneity in the organization. Yeah, and along those lines of smaller partners, like a lot of a lot of the most interesting imaginative ideas because back to Savanta, the other thing they had at their booth and I'm, I won't get this description quite right, but they, you'll like this new app that they built that um, I think there's some Fiori aspects to it. I'm not sure, but it's basically like a, it's a project pulse where you take the health of a project pulse based on certain f signals from employees. Right. Which goes Sounds back to kind this. of familiar to me. Yeah. yeah I yeah. think you, you're I'll familiar. I'll do IP scans. So yeah. yeah. You might want to see if they, if they've looked at some of your past work. Yeah. Um, but the point is like, here's a partner saying we got to take more responsibility for project health. Uh, and honestly, that's the the responsibility in my opinion, also of the main vendors, <laughs> SAP and any other, but it's really cool to see partners saying, here's something creative and different and I'm going to do it. I'm going to build it. And to your point, if SAP can help to raise the profile of those, then then yeah. that's great. That's it's great really for everyone. Customers. Yeah, which is what it's all supposed to be about, right? Yep. Now, you uh, just as we wrap here, you you're working on uh, you're percolating an interesting blog post. Can you share with us what you're thinking yeah, about so, there? Yeah. So this is this is sort of you know the the uh, the result of all this this conferencing I've been doing, uh, kind of ad, ad ad nauseum for the last month and a half. But you know what's really struck me is you know in addition to the desperate need to support the heterogeneous environment. Um, companies really, you know, SAP needs to put some put some weight behind the idea that they they are the business process leader, that they understand end to end processes, and they can they can they can help the customer achieve true end to end process productivity and efficiency um, through you know through the application of their technology. What I what I found in going from a you know from spend from sorry Success Connect and HR Spend Connect Spend uh, listening in on the CX Live is that there's still there's too many silos. There's too many silos inside SAP. There's too many silos outside SAP um, and it, in the customer base. And so I'm working on this blog post about how do you how do you sort of reconfigure maybe the conference idea to be able to pull all those pieces together and really have a place where and this is the key the key idea you want to cross pollinate the ideas that, that are being put in front of the supply chain VP with those that are putting in front of the VP of service. Because they actually have to come together to, to, do, to good, do good by the customer. What's happening over in HR has a huge impact on, on literally, you know, on the logistics supply chain, on the warehouse management, because people permeate every single process of, of any value, and, and as does customers. So this idea that we have to sort of break out of this mold of, of line of business conferences and line of business go to market and say, let's let's mm. 
sell the let's really sell the process. But in order to do that, you have to have to get those those process owners along that complex process to sit down and see the value of actually the the internal integration they need. Uh, and I'll add that vendors like SAP and everybody else has to also start to educate their own sales force how to sell that idea as well. Yeah. They're, they're stuck carrying quota for a line of business app and not thinking the big picture that they should be able to, that they should be able to. Well, it, it's funny because in, in my last tech I post, I wrote a, um, no, it was in my CX SAP CX post. I said that that team needs to be embedded into Sapphire because that, it's kind of what you're talking about, but this notion of cross-pollination, if you're serious about serving end customers, you need to mix that in. But what you're doing is taking this much further because well, <laughs> you're basically proposing to disrupt the entire SAP event calendar, well, yeah, which I is mean, which is going to be fun reading. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, be, because right now there's a lot of line of business focus events, right? right. And so you're kind of saying like, well, I think, and, and, let's mix this up in a blender and see what we can get. get and, is, and I'm saying let's not necessarily do it in the context of Sapphire because you want these right. these LOB leaders to attend. And to be very honest, they don't necessarily go to Sapphire. I don't think that brand is attractive to them. So um, you see them at Success Connect if they're HR. You see them at Spend Connect if they're in Spend. You, you don't see them in these other places. So I am sort of proposing, you know, a radical kind of yeah. disruption, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to make a lot of friends. Yeah, bit. yeah, I'm really looking forward to the reactions inside of SAP to this post. This is going to be fun for me. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to kind of like look at someone else jumping into the brink. So. Yeah, right. Go, go um, for it. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How is the water, Josh? Yeah. Um, and by the way, just for folks who are, if they're like, when is Josh's post going to be out? You can prime the pump by reading. Your last post um, on that topic, content is the printer experience is the ink, which kind yeah. of sets up right. this next one. So that one will be a good fodder for now until we wait your next Thank missive. Thank you, yeah. So, so that that eases the pressure on getting this next I'm one out the get door. The, I'm, I'm getting this out soon. It's, it's is it coming soon? For a while, yeah. I think, oh, okay, I think probably cool. next week, uh, before Thanksgiving. Yeah. How's that for a promise? Yeah. Meanwhile, by the time you hear this, my post on discussions with Jurgen and, and the event itself should be up on Diginomica if all goes well. But I do got to get home. So that is a project. So anyway, thanks for joining. Until next time. Thanks, Josh. My pleasure as always. It's a lot of fun. Uh, oh, and for those of you that were wondering, where's Jeff Scott? Because we did this three-man weave in our in our last one. We are probably going to do a sequel to that to revisit those yeah, topics. I think but, that's a good idea. But Jeff's a little busy right now. He is. He's got a show to run. He still is. Yeah, all right, okay. dude. Thank Talk you. to you later. Yeah. Bye.